Give me your philosophy. Tell me and teach me how to lay down my life for somebody coming after you and never throw it up in their face. Show me how to build a university that I could not go to, that you could not go to. Tell me how to march for the right to vote that you may not have ever seen. Show me how to work diligently, diligently on a job where I am the boss when you never had the opportunity to be the boss. Show me how to control my tongue and not be so easily insulted when people call me out my name. Give me your experience. Tell me what it was like to go and register to vote and somebody asks you some stupid question like how many grains of sand are there on the ocean so that you are on the beach so that you might have the qualifications to vote. Tell me what it's like to go in the back door but yet maintain integrity. Amen. Show me what it's like. Give me, give me the benefit of your wisdom. Do not take it to the grave with you. I need that. I need to understand that life was not always as it is now. I need to understand how to build a family with nothing. I def desperately need to know how to love the same woman from 16 to 91. If you want to be grand, give me your generosity. There are grandparents, adults, elders, seniors. Teach me respect. Teach me the kind of respect that is listed in, Deuteron in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 32, where it talks about how important it is that you respect the elders. Teach me first how to respect myself as a man, as a woman, as a father, as a mother. Teach me that I can respect myself without throwing myself a boasting of who I am and what I have. Teach me how to respect those who are my elders, not because they have more money or not because they have more a better position, but teach me how to respect them simply because they have lived longer on this life, in this life, than I have. Teach me how the ancient African tribes, before they did anything, would call the elders and ask for their counsel their permission. Teach me how to respect my own father and mother so that when I am at an age that I can think for myself, but yet they're at an age too that I can go to them and respect their counsel. The Bible says, older women teach the younger women how to love, and I'm inferring, how to respect their husbands. How to respect their children, how to respect their home, how to respect themselves. Older women teach younger women that you don't have to put all your business in the street. Teach them how that when, when he comes in, if you're on the phone, you get off the phone unless there's an emergency because you want to show deference to him. Teach your sons how to honor women and never let certain words come out of your mouth, not even in jest. Fathers, Teach sons, young sons, young married sons, how to just walk away, how to sit on the porch until she cools down, then go in and try it again. 
You are the generation that knows what respect is about. You are the generation, though you did not have college degrees and did not make millions and millions of dollars or even hundreds of thousands of dollars, you knew how to respect yourself. You knew how to respect the church. You knew how to respect authority. You knew how to respect elders. You knew how to respect children. You knew how to respect the law. You, you, were, you were bathed in respect. But your fathering a generation that knows very little about respect for anything. Show me, grandfather, show me, grandmother, how to respect myself. Thirdly, the A, give me, give me advice. Give me advice. You see, advice and counsel and wisdom endures through the years. It's the same principle. Different stories, different examples, but same principle. Give me advice. When I was younger, I knew everything. I did. I knew the answers before I knew the questions. When I was 17, I had it all figured out. But as I turned 27 and 37 and 47 and hopefully 57, there's some questions now I don't even know how to ask, let alone how to answer them. And one of the joys of life is listening to an older person who has been there, who has done that, who has the experience, and they have the willingness to share. Because much of what they can share with you, the advice that they can give you, can carry you on through your life. Because they understand the principles by which life is lived. They understand what's important and what is not. Which leads me to my next point. The end in grand. I need you as a senior, as an adult, as a grandparent, to show me what is necessary in life and what is not. Solomon, as we're studying the book of Ecclesiastes, goes through this whole array of things and goes through this whole array of experience trying to find wisdom and trying to find understanding. And he says, I, I give myself to folly, but then I found out, you know, that's really foolishness to just live this life the few years that you have and be a fool all your days. But then he says, I give myself to wisdom. But then he said, you know, the more you know, the more trouble you have. Because if you knew everything that you were eating and where this stuff came from, you probably wouldn't eat. If you knew where the dollars came from and where they've been that you have in your wallet, you probably wouldn't have much money. If you knew how close the pedophiles are to you and to your children, you wouldn't let your kids go to school. If you knew how close you are every day when you get in your car to being in an accident and how many people drive distracted or impaired, you probably would never get in your car. Amen. We spend so much of our lives gathering things that are not necessary. I had an interesting text message just yesterday from our son and he wrote me his text message and for whatever reason he said dad what is it that you wish you had known at age 23 which is his age what 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 is it that you wish you had known and I, I sent him a message and said, well, let me call you and talk about this because I don't text very fast and this was going to be a long subject. <laughs> and the answer was this, I, I wish I had understood that time is never as long as it seems and never as short as it seems. 
There's some things you can jump into and say, I'm going to be in this for just a little while. It's just going to affect me for just a little while. And 20 years later, you're dealing with the consequences that you thought would be just a short time. But then there are things you think that, that it's, it's going to be a long time getting through school. It's going to be a long time getting through this. And when you've gone through it, you realize that really wasn't very long at all. And I wish when I was 23 that I had known time is not as long as it seems. But it's also not, not as short as it seems. And the rest of my words to him was so that I could apply myself to what's really necessary in life. Solomon came to the same conclusion. He said, look, I found the conclusion of the whole thing. Fear God. Keep his commandments. That's it. That's it. It ain't the car. It's not the house, it's not the job, it's not all those other things. All those things are good. And if you have an opportunity to have a good job, a good car, a good house, enjoy those things, but never fall in love with them. Because they are not necessary for your happiness. They are not necessary for your happiness. They're just stuff you want. And you wreck your whole marriage, working overtime, doing everything you can to get the next biggest house. You got five bedrooms, now you want 10. You got 10 bedrooms, now you want 20. And you don't have but three friends. <laughs> Seniors, teach me what's necessary. Yeah, it's nice to have a new car if you want one every year. But is it really worth spending time away from your kids and from your family trying to get another car? Is it really necessary? Yeah, it's great to be able to go wherever you want to go and do all these other things, but, but, but at this stage of your life, is it really necessary? When you have gone and you look back, you look back over your life and you say, you know, that wasn't really necessary. And that's what our elders can teach us. It's not necessary. It's not necessary that everybody likes you. It's not necessary to be in vogue or in fads. Because they change. Just get you a good suit, good pair of pants. You don't need nobody's name on your rear end. If you do, write your own on there. <laughs> They're really necessary. This greatest generation, you can teach us about what's necessary. You can teach us that. Because sometimes I think with all of the options that we have, that we have collectively lost our minds. Share with you not too long ago, is it really necessary that I have 500 channels on my TV? I mean, really, really. Let's think about it. Is it really necessary? Finally. You are the generation that can teach us determination. I need to know what it's like to want an education so bad that I'll work a year, go to school a year. Work another year, go to school another year. And do that until I'm finished. One of the things that we discovered on that trip to Jamaica, my wife asked one of the cab drivers, why, why is it that we see so many unfinished houses? And he said, you know, in Jamaica, one of the things that they can do is that they don't have necessarily the inspector to come along. You don't have to get the certificate of occupancy or whatever. So what they do is that they start building a house and they build one room to live in. And as they get the money, they add on to the house. So it may take them 20 years 
to finish the house of their dreams. But when they get it, it's theirs. And, and, and I think that for many of us, if we live in such an instantaneous society that we lack the determination to stay with something long enough until it works out, to stay with it long enough until we get it done, to stay in the marriage long enough until the person that we married finally becomes a person that we live with again. Some businesses took 30 years to build, but we lacked the determination to stay with it for just a few days. Some of the land that was sold for a few pieces of money, not, not, even, not even whole money, pieces of money, took our four parents years and years and years to pay off of, pay off. The schools that we let go down because we will not support them, it took some of those slaves and former slaves years to build. The churches that we run away from took our four parents years of determination to keep going, selling chicken, selling fish, doing whatever they could. But you are the generation that knows what it's like to be determined. If you ever want to see a great but yet bloody picture of determination, go to the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama. And if you can, get an actual footage of what it was like on that day. People who wanted to vote so badly that even though the first row of people were knocked down and bullied and billy clubbed, the second row, instead of turning, kept coming because they were determined that those who come after me will have a better life than I had. If you really want to be grand, senior, it's not about giving me more money. It's helping me to stay in there when times are tough. Because in this life, times are tough. Times will get tough. Marriage will get tough. Family will get tough. Children will get tough. Jobs will get tough. Education will be get tough. Life just in general will get tough. Teach me how to be determined. Determined enough to keep going when everything in me tells me to quit. If you want to be grand, if you want to be grand, teach me how to be determined. And not just give up when the first little adversity in life comes along because it is coming. You are, to our seniors, a great blessing to us. And that's why I wanted to pause today just to let you know that. To let you know that your labor is not in vain. To let you know that we do honor you. To let you know that we do appreciate you. And even though most of us have no idea of all that you've been through, we want to, with the little that we know, say to you, thanks. Thanks for being the influence of the lowest in our lives, that even though father was gone or not actively involved, you stood in there. And you became the example of faith 
that will carry us on through the rest of our lives. Let's pray.